Sit back and listen. It's time for License to Practice by IELTS Medical. Hello and welcome back to License to Practice from IELTS Medical. Today we're going to be talking to Yao, a nurse from Ghana who moved over to the UK last year in 2021. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you never miss an episode and let's give Yao a call. Hello, good morning. Hi, good morning, how are you? I'm fine, and you? Yeah, fine, thank you. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing your story uh, with us. If you could just start by just introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about you. Well, um, my name is Yao. I'm a nurse from Ghana. Um, I'm 33 years old, um, married with three kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and then had um, my last job I did before coming to the UK was I was working with the World Health Organization mm-hmm. in a COVID center. Oh. Um, which was opened by the United Nations in Ghana. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a little bit about me. So you... I prefer to be called Yao. Yao. That's Y-A-W. Okay, yeah. perfect. Thanks for letting me know. Um, so you, you've you only just moved to the UK. That, well, I, I say only just COVID. feels like it's gone on forever, doesn't it? Um, but obviously you've moved uh, since COVID. Yes, I've moved to the UK. I'm now a registered nurse. I'm working in Wales, um, a university oh. town called Aberystwyth. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, um, it's a nice place to be. I think Wales is one of the beautiful places in in the world with the mountains and all the other things you you can imagine. Yeah. yeah um, I moved here um, last year. Um, I, I arrived in the UK at around, um, I think it was on the 25th of July. Mm-hmm. So basically, I've worked here almost um, barely a year now. Yeah, so it's you've done it all quite quickly then. So you, you moved on the 25th of July. When did you actually start the process of of becoming registered of getting your registration well um i started the process way back um at some um, i think it was 2020 mm-hmm. um december 2020 i wanted to move out of ghana and then mm-hmm. um i mean explore the other parts of the world um so basically i was i was focusing on going to the united states okay um but you know I, it was it takes a little bit time mm-hmm. as compared to moving to the UK. So early 2021, I shifted the post and decided to, you know, um, come to the UK. And fortunately for me, mm-hmm. um, you do the um, part of the exams for UK in Ghana. Okay. And then when you are successful and you come here, um, you do the um, practical, which is the OSCE. Are you ready to pass the NMC OSKEY the first time as efficiently as possible? Then you're in the right place. Here at IELTS Medical, we've seen adult nurses through to a first time OSKEY pass ending last year with 98% first time pass rate and 100% second. We've also assisted mental health nurses, children's nurses and midwives through their OSCE exams too. Accessible OSCE practice rooms and expert-led courses. Our nurses are not only passing their exams, but they're having fun doing it too. Inquire today about how we can assist you too. Yeah, and then you'll be issued with your PIN. As a registered nurse here, so I started um, um, in January 2021. Yeah. Yeah. And when did you get your registration? When did you get your pin? Well, um, there was a little bit hitch, you know. Okay. When I came, I, I felt the aisles I wrote was um, the correct one, mm-hmm. but it wasn't. So I had to oh. write rewrite the aisles again. So I registered with um, the aisle center in. Nottingham University of Nottingham, which I wrote, unfortunately for me, I had um, 8.5 overall, and yeah. I was brought on board. So my my pin was just was issued to me just I think on um, February this year. Oh wow! Well, congratulations. So yeah, so it's yeah. been it took about a year then for the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It's 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 fairly simple and straightforward. 
mm. um, with regards to moving from Ghana to um, the UK. So what is the actual process then of moving to Ghana, fr- sorry, from Ghana to the UK? So I know you said that you started it, you started yeah, the process um, in Ghana. What, what the, the part process, was that? The processes I went through was basically you have to do your um, your clearance with the NMC Ghana. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, then after that, you have to register with the UK NMC, mm-hmm. which was also done in Ghana. Afterwards, um, the UK NMC will clear you that you... Um, you qualify to write um, the computer-based test, and then you yeah. they will give you a date that you can write the computer-based um, based test, which mm-hmm. was done in Ghana. Okay. So after that, when you come out successful, you would need to write an English proficiency test, which is um, um the IELTS or the OET. Mm-hmm. But um, the OET is not done in Ghana; it's only the IELTS. Right. That's, um, it's mostly done in Ghana. So after a successful completion of the IELTS and you get all the required score bands for um, the UK, um, you just you apply. You can apply directly to the NHS, or probably you get recruited by an agency, mm-hmm. and then they will take you to um, the processes of going to the immigration, um, um, doing your TB test, and then they will book for um, appointments with them. Um, um, the immigration center for you to acquire your visa. Mm-hmm. So that's basically the whole process. Is that's and it, it takes like about I think it was about three months to get everything done. Okay, and so you obviously the reason you did the IELTS is because that's the that's the exam they've got in Ghana. Um, because I know you know there's always different reasons why some people choose the IELTS over the OET. Yeah, for- for me, um, the reason why I chose, I could have written the OET when I came here, my mm-hmm. scores wasn't right, but I chose the IELTS because um, it has um, a wide range of um, services. You can use it to further your education. That if you want, you wish to you move right. on, and it looks kind of the OET is kind of restricted to your work, mm-hmm. but the IELTS, the academic one, is just is a broad thing that you can use it. Basically, in the US, in Canada, or Australia or anywhere you wish to, you know, yeah. move to, and you can also use it apply for school too. So that's why I did the IELTS instead of the OET. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Good, all good reasons. Um, so obviously you said that you initially wanted to go to to United States, and now you've come to the UK. Do you like it in the UK? Are you happy happy with the move? Yeah, I'm. Um, I'm very happy with um moving to the UK because um. You know where I, I I found myself. I was so lucky to you know meet people who are mm-hmm. welcoming and then easy and outgoing, and then like you know they they make you feel like a part of your of, of their community. Yeah. You know, so um I'm I'm really happy down here. Good, yeah. good. I'm glad. And have you noticed many differences um in sort of the working the, your actual profession in the UK compared to Ghana? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, I was fortunate to have worked with the WHO, the UN site and um, hospital that was opened in Ghana for some few months because mm-hmm. in Ghana where I was working, there were not a lot of equipment. I mean, medical equipment yeah. there. So most of the things were like improvisation. You have to improvise. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Um, yeah. But when I came here, you know, you, you, you get to see a lot of... um a lot of um, equipment and then you learn every day how to use them so it makes the health service delivery very easy you know there's you don't have to improvise there, there are yeah. a lot of things here you know like the monitors and then other things big big things here and how did you find um learning sort of how to use all this equipment and stuff if you've not used it before is that something that you learn on the job or did maybe the OSCE help with that or or how how was that process well, I will say there's this part that, you know, um, I hate to say, but I have to let you know. Um, mm-hmm. You know, sometimes it's it looks like we, we came to meet a lot of different people working already here. And let me tell you, some of them are really, really friendly and good. Others who just want you to fail. Right. I have to be frank with you. And, yeah. you know, we have to learn things the hard way. Like, mm-hmm. um, you see an equipment and then you just go home, you go on the youtube and then you search how to use it right and then when you come to work you ask someone who is proficient in using those kind of equipment mm-hmm. you combine it with what you've learned on youtube and then you go and with practice you just you know 
it would be good, you know. But some of them genuinely wanted us to fail, so they would just be adamant um, in teaching you how to use the equipment. So we have to learn things, some of the things the hard way, I must say. Yeah, yeah, quite well, yeah. Um, so just um, just going back to your sort of, your your training to to get through the exams. You said, so you, obviously you did the CBT in Ghana, you did the IELTS over here and the OSCE over here. Is that right? Yes, that's that's right. Yeah, and, and what, what sort of things did you do to help with those exams? Like, have you got any advice for people that are just starting who might, you know, want want help with studying or, or preparing for them? Yeah, for, for the um, IELTS, I had a fair um, idea about it from Ghana before moving here. Mm-hmm. And I have to tell you, I learned on my own. Like, I just learned on my own. I mm-hmm. went on YouTube, um, watched a couple of videos. Yeah. Um, you know, I was a little bit weak with reading because I was not um, a, a fast reader. And you know, it's mm-hmm. time bound. You need to read um, three passages in, I think, within a period of one hour and answer 40 questions. So I did yeah. it a lot of the time. Um, for reading and then which I sell after that and so it needs it needs practice it needs constant practice but with the um, OSCE I have to tell you it was an experience of my life a, a very good experience of my life because mm-hmm. um, I registered with um, IELTS Medical which I had a training um, in London mm-hmm. and they gave me the best you know the best of um you know training i could ever imagine it okay um um thankfully when i left and then um went to take my oski in um the um northern island um it will surprise you to know i had the same task as the mock that i did with ielts medical oh really yes that's yes. lucky so it was just it was just fantastic and yeah. i came out with flying colors Oh, amazing! Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you did. That's really good. Um, so are you are you all settled here? Is your family settled here? Because obviously, I know I keep coming back to this, but if they thought they were moving to America and now and now they've come to England, did they are they settled here? Is everybody? Yes, yes. Yeah. The interesting part is that my wife is also a nurse. Oh, and I okay. To to bring her here, and she's also left with the OSCE. Which of course she also had her training with IELTS Medica last ah, okay. week. Okay. Um, and then we are planning to you know secure um sponsorship for her to write her OSCE. Uh, mm-hmm. After which she can she can she can also practice as a nurse. But she's also very happy with me here, and we are planning to go back home and bring the kids here as well. To you know there are a lot of opportunities here for the yeah. kids with regards to education and other things. So. It is in the pipeline. We will go probably by August. My case, you'll be settled here. Oh, amazing. Well, I'm really happy for you and good luck to your wife as well. I hope it all goes well for her exam. Just before I let you go, do you have any final words of advice for anybody just starting out on uh, on the journey of becoming registered here in the UK? Well, um, to be frank with you, um, I really love it out here. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of experience and expertise and people who are, let me say, overqualified yeah. um, to work here in the UK, um, in Ghana, and then in other parts of um, Africa, mm-hmm. who would, you know, want to want to, you know, come and then help um, with um, um, the nursing department in the UK. Yeah. I have to say nursing is a universal kind of thing. So for me it doesn't matter whether I help people here or I help people back home. It's a calling mm-hmm. and I have to, you know, wherever I find myself I have to work. And I believe most people have the same idea. Yeah. But um the 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 thing is that most of them are already here and they are overqualified and they are not getting the required band for the um the um, OSCE, um, right. um, excuse me, the IELTS and then the um, OET. Mm-hmm. So I'll plead with those um, who matter, like those who can, you know, really relate with authorities to sometimes also look at their background, their background, the training, you know, mm-hmm. most of the African countries, especially where I come from in Ghana, mm-hmm. um, I think our formal language is English, yeah. right from the scratch. That is, you'll be taught in school with English, everything, right? from um kindergarten to the university you are taught in english 
Yeah. You get what I mean? But when you come and, you know, some write two or three times, they don't get it and they become frustrated and things, you know, mm-hmm. gets um, bad for them. So I will just plead with you, if you know um, those who matter, those who can really talk to the authorities, sometimes they have to look at the person's background. I'm surprised you to know that there are people here who have masters um, in public health and they, yeah. they were doing physician assistant. And programs in Ghana and they are here and uh, because they've not been able to get the English um, requirements here mm-hmm. um, they are still struggling out there so yeah. the little um, thing I would say is if you you people know people who matters at least you can start advocating that those with a background of you know started training from infancy in English and then have yeah. their masters and other things and are over qualified to you know do nursing here they should just give the NMC should just give um, them, um, um, you know, a second. They should give a second thought and then think yeah. about how things can be organised for such people. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. Actually, it's not something we've we've uh, really spoken about on here before. But yeah, it's a really good point because um, it's tough, isn't it? To yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's really it's. Re- I I wrote on two different occasions when I came here. I wrote on two. I nearly gave up. But you know, mm. it comes with um, perseverance and then persistence. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. thank goodness she didn't, because it's all paid off, and yeah, and yeah, it's gonna it really and and off. for your wife as well. I've got yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Good luck to her, and yeah. Thank you so much for coming on, and I just best of luck with everything, bringing your kids over here, and I, and I hope hope it all all works out. Yeah, thank you so much and um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, you too. Thank you so much for listening to Licensed to Practice from IELTS Medical again and I really hope that you enjoyed my chat with Yao. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you never miss an episode and I will see you next time. And as always, to your success.